Welcome into the latest edition of Extra Time. Craig's been warming up all show just to get angry enough for this moment. He's, he's, he's I peaking. <laughs> I feel that there's been some, I don't know, preconceived ideas about my <laughs> temperament. I wonder where we got that from. Been fine all week, haven't I? <laughs> you have, you have been, yeah. I mean, those TVs weren't working. Yeah, well, <laughs> got a mention, but you know. I've got to get a mention. There's only one game we were supposed to watch. Dan and I, and Stevie, was the England game against get it. Belgium, and it, it went it went wandering off. We couldn't get it. That was the only, that, we only had one job. <laughs> and we couldn't do it. it. Frank's with us as well. Don't worry, maybe you could get it over on Dan's computer. Apparently there's a faster link over there, right? <laughs> oh, I don't know, it's just my computer doesn't work. Although, I, I, I must admit, I've been using his computer. It's his, have you seen it? It needs a good... <laughs> we're well, not quite back to the COVID days when you're spraying stuff down, but his needs sprayed down. His needs a little spray. Uh, his his desk like... area needs a good... Scrub, I'm telling you now. <laughs> Craig, <Filthy. laughs> Craig, what do you think about the new rule in the EPL that ball boys are not allowed to throw the ball directly to a player and now instead players have to get the ball off of cones, seven on each side of the pitch themselves? Uh, I saw something about this earlier today and is it something to do with the... I don't know if there's been anything in the uh, EFL but there was certainly an incident at Bournemouth recently with a ball boy and, uh, who was it? Did somebody enlighten me? I have no idea. <sighs> It'll come to me. An opposing player shoved the ball boy. And it, and then it, blah, blah, blah. It was all sort of sorted out. But I don't know. It would take, we're just taking things too far now. I, I don't know. Bit indifferent to this? Oh. Or you think it's a little bit too far? I, I'm You're completely right indifferent to it. Right. I, I don't see the point of it. Uh, with Burn Leno, uh, Burn Leno, yeah. It was Burn Leno in the in the, in the Fulham game, and then it was, they were all and the little lad was all right. And I'm sure he got a little girl. I can't remember what it was, and I'm sure he got a souvenir. But not suggesting that makes it all right. But uh, you know, I don't know. What is it? The, uh, case they throw it back too quickly. To uh, they don't throw it back. Throw quickly. back I mean, yeah. we're now micromanaging everything, aren't we? Including this. All right, Shaka, did you ever have a run of bad games with several costly mental errors? If so, how did you get yourself sorted out and back to playing well? Yeah, I, I think you always... Everybody has that spell where you, you go through uh, you go through and, and have a ton of errors. Um, back to basics, just doing things really simply. Don't go... I, I think the thing that makes things worse and, and spirals and, and in a way that you can't get yourself out of is when you start chasing it. You know, I, from a goalkeeping perspective, when you start coming for every cross because you think, oh, I missed that last cross, so let me go for the next one, or chasing every single through ball, I say do exactly the opposite. Come for the crosses that you know you're going to get and build your confidence from there. And, and, uh, do as little as possible. And, and build from there. from there. And build from there. The less you do, the, <laughs> less, the less mistakes you can Set your make. foundations really low. Set your bar really low and go from there. Jackie Hislop's philosophy for life. Well, that's, that's <laughs> right. And by the well, way, yeah. it's one a lot of people could learn from. <laughs> Lower your bar. All right. There's a saying in this world don't be a busy fool. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, you very, Thank you very much, Greg. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> I don't know what you that has to do with you being in bad form. <laughs> oh, I'm just saying, there's a saying, <laughs> don't be a busy fool. <laughs> <laughs> don't do things you don't have to do to try and impress her. Just, just let yeah. Yeah. Do your own thing. Keep your bar low. Let it do be. Your job. Do your Keep job. your bar low. For all, during your playing days, Frank, how often do you, did you guys keep in touch with your international teammates throughout the season? Uh, I have to say that uh, I had a wonderful time at Strasbourg the first year where um, uh, you guys keep in touch with your international teammates throughout. Yeah, and I, when I started to, uh, to be with the national team in Strasbourg, I was trying to get in touch with uh, Vicente Lizarazu the, most of the time. And, um, and, and after when I was in England, uh, at the end of my time at Chelsea for like... Uh, um, almost a year. Uh, I was seeing uh, Emmanuel Petit a lot. Uh, he was living 
close to my uh, to my area and uh, in uh, close to Chelsea so we used to see each other a lot and having lunch and talking uh, French uh, um, in uh, in the capital of England that was that was great you know and uh, yeah I tried to to see Patrick Vieira as well I was organizing dinners at the French Embassy and uh, I remember uh, inviting Steven Wiltot, um, Robert Pires, uh, Patrick Vieira as well and, uh, and that, that, was, that was great. That was a great time with, that we had together, uh, sharing our experiences living in London. See the difference? See the difference? The French are meeting up, sharing dinner at the French Embassy. Speaking French. We're meeting at the pub playing darts. There's <laughs> <laughs> a cultural difference here. When you were meeting up. They're not eating doner kebabs at 2.30 <laughs> in the morning and trying to hail a cab. Right? They're just not. <laughs> or is that just me? <laughs> no, 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 not at all. I used to play golf with Gary McAllister, but I think it might have been just after we finished. But Gary lived in the East Midlands, the same as me, so I'd see Gary now and again. We'd play some golf. But I, I was good good buddies with all the guys, and we had a really solid national team with a very tight-knit squad. But can you, the, the other side of it was, particularly around 95, 96, uh, I can't remember if we had mobile phones then. I think yeah, we, we may have done, but they were about that new. size. Yeah, yeah. You, had to, you had to hold it with two hands. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, so... Uh, the, the Craig, like that. Craig, like yeah, that. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> Hello. And then you pulled a big, like, there's a big antenna come yeah. out the top of it. Uh, so I think it was more, it was more oh, problematic to be in touch, keep yeah. in touch. I, I, I mean, we, well, trying to be, of course, we, we, I stayed in touch with a lot of those guys I grew up with. I, I played in a, in a junior national team with Dwight when I was 10 years old. So for us to kind of come through the ranks and then, um, and of course, coming from Toronto to be a country as small as ours, the players who end up in, in England and or Scotland, um, there's not that many. And, you know, so there, there's a real kinship there. So we, we stayed in touch a lot because I, I just known these guys for for so long and, and still in touch with them to this day. Does a national team captain have to make sure he's staying in touch with? No, that's not like part of the role. No. 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 Okay. Well, he has, he has a bite of kebabs. Just well, been a busy two, fool, you know. Two, yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah, but checking out the other three, you know. Is he drinking? <laughs> no, not it's like more, that. Is he not drinking? <laughs> saying hello. You know? Yeah. No? Who's at the door? Oh, it's the captain. <laughs> yeah. Come to check. I've driven 400 miles just to check that you're in the house. <laughs> <laughs> Sending a letter in the post. Yeah. <laughs> OK, what's your least favourite kit you ever played in? And this includes youth team kits. Least favourite? Coventry's. Frank knows this. Yeah. Yes, away from home. I yeah. never, have, I red, never red, ever red, played uh, for Coventry City but I played in Coventry City's kit in a Premier League game. Yeah, me too. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that... We oh, forgot, I mean, the, the, what, the kit that's man... The Celtic away, that's the yeah. Celtic away kit. That's the Chelsea away kit in 95. That's the Scotland, yeah. away, Scotland away kit. Look at the hair. Oh, my oh. God. Oh. OK, so these are some that obviously our team didn't like so much. Yes, yeah. the Coventry that's one. Frank. You see, that's the Coventry kit. Tell us yeah. more. Tell us the story. Frank will tell you. Is that the Coventry tell us kit? The story, yeah, Frank. The, the, yeah, yeah, the yeah. We, we, in fact, our kit, our kit man forgot the away kit, and we only had the home kit, which of course was blue, like Coventry. So we couldn't play with it. And kindly, kindly, I have to say, Coventry uh, uh, lent us the, uh, the, the their shirt. But you can see we 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 hit the, the the badge, and I remember we lost that game, and I was so upset at the end. I put everything on the shirt, and I threw the shirt on the on the grass, and the FA because there were some complaints, uh, right right, Lucy, I have to say, complaints about Coventry fans, and I again apologize for that, uh, for my for my behavior. But the, the FA. Uh, uh, send me a letter saying that that was the last time that we threw a shirt on the grass. Otherwise, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be suspended. So, and after the other one is the uh, away shirt. That was a great one. I think the Chelsea fan loved that one. And uh, the last one is uh, Al Sad, the uh, 
the uh, Qatari shirt from the club that I became champion <laughs> the first year that I played in Qatar. With the number what, one, what, you can what, see on the short, my, my, my number is number one. I had number one shirt. What are you doing in your mouth here? What's this? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I, I was saying to the referee that he had a smelly breath that he should put some, uh, <laughs> some, some uh, mint <laughs> stuff. I don't, know. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. So it was interesting, the, the, the game at uh, Highfield Road as it was then, Coventry. We're talking about you, you got you got one job, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The kit man's got one job, right? Is to put the away kit <laughs> in the hampers, in the big kit hampers, and take them to Coventry. And it was quite funny because Rude was the manager, Rude Hewlett, and he couldn't get his head around it. How is this possible? <laughs> he, he, he was walking around saying, how is this possible? How is this possible? <laughs> hey guys, how is this possible? He came out to say that, how is this possible? And the, when he lifted, but before that, when the kit man went, right, he lifted the hamper up, he went... <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> boss! <laughs> boss, there's a problem! <laughs> we have a problem! <laughs> when, when, when was that West Ham oh one, one year? I can't remember if this was my first or second, second year. We got not not a real game, a preseason friendly. We get there, no boots, no boots are on the bus. Game's off. So off. I, I think we, I think the kit man it kind of dawned on him halfway there or something like that, and then he had to jump out, get a car to take him back. So we had to warm up in in trainers because that's I mean we were in track suits and the trainers. We just had to kind of warm up in trainers as best we could, wait for the boots to arrive, and and then put them on the plate. No boots. Oh, yeah, that would, that would yeah. be a problem. No. Um, you're not getting away with this. What? What? Yeah, you're not going to. Oh. oh, legendary oh kits. <laughs> the short shorts as well. <laughs> Holy shit. Oh, the shorts. The shorts. <laughs> oh, yeah, the short shorts. The short, short. The short, yeah, I, let me tell you something. Those, those, those two on the left were reading kits, those. Yeah, why did you go from the... You, you've sort of sandwiched the sort of tight-fitted... So the one in the middle, well, the middle and, and the one to the left, those that, those are Reading. That, that was. But they're so big, the the baggy. Yeah, that was that was my style. Well, you not, not your style. Look at your style. And well, that's when I first arrived. They gave me that. They gave me those. That's all they had. The middle one. That's yeah. all they had. Well, then what's wrong with the middle one? Too short. Too small. No, no. Then I went from there. I went from there to the big ones, and then it continued at Newcastle. Newcastle had some great kids, by the way. Oh, um, yeah, we can see that, no, yeah. it's interesting you say that, because we wanted to ask you how much you think a signed Shaka jersey from those days would cost. Oh, I don't know. Not much. Five bucks. Yeah, not much. The Newcastle you shirt with the <laughs> that, that was, that that was a win. That includes... Po you underestimate that your includes colleague. That package and postage. You underestimate yourself. Do you care to have a guess, Frank? Why, who's selling it? Somebody got a hooky one on eBay. So it's more than one that's for sale. Really? It's a similar price. Shh, it's him that's selling it. <laughs> 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 I'm a buy it. So what I'm, did I'm you think a buy it. A signed Shaka jersey. A Shaka jersey. Oh, how much I would be ready to how pay? How much you would pay? Uh, Pounds. I think something like, uh, I would say like 300, 300 bucks. Easily, easily. Yeah. What? It's Shaka Isha. Oh, come on. I'll it's give you given. a call after the show, Frank. Still very below what's actually out there right <laughs> now. What? Mm -hmm. well, are we going to get to this or what? We could double that. Yeah? What? Yeah. Who's yeah. buying it? Oh, you see? I don't know who's buying it. But they are. So, what's it, what's really? the, there's two that are up for sale for over £600. Hold on. That's, oh. that's the value. Shouldn't, they, shouldn't that come your way? It's, it's, it's crazy how much, <laughs> it's crazy how much the family is ready to pay. <laughs> and Shaka, it's crazy how much the family, your family is ready to pay. Good? <laughs> how much the family is ready to pay to make me feel good? Yep, there you go. I'll show you the proof later. If yeah, I, I, am, I am shocked at that. Well, maybe we've just put the price up as well. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, that, I, 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 I keep that, is, that is further confirmation that this world, there's a lot of idiots out there. <laughs> I get if you didn't me. need to, you didn't know that already. <laughs> I get one for your birthday. I get you one for your birthday, Craig. Yeah. All right. All yours. To all, who's the one manager currently managing in the Premier League you'd have enjoyed playing under, aside from Pep or Klopp, currently managing? Currently? OK. Uh, let me think. I'll go down. See, Arteta is too intense for me, that. 
Yeah, it's kind of intense. So, uh, you don't think you'd like those mantras? If he's, if he's bobbing around in the, if he's bobbing around the touchline, he's he's he's. He's, he's a target. I know. I, I have my answer. I'm not taking the light bulb stories and all that. So me too. I, I think me too. I think have he's, my he's, answer. He's done great, but so he's not me. You ever think your answer is? I need the league table. Costa Coglu. Costa Coglu. Ah, uh, yes. I, I think he's a great man manager. I like him a lot. Right. I really, really. What about you, Frank? Yeah, I'm with Shaka. I mean, I feel the the, the vibe that guy that guy is. Uh, Put inside the dressing room and and how he, how much he changed the dressing room and the, the 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 brain of the player has completely changed in a, into a positive way. I, I would be thrilled. I would have been thrilled to play to play under him. And and I, otherwise, yeah. Um, you know what? I, what is his name? Um, oh, uh, I, it's just at the what? edge of my tongue, as we say. What team? Um, what uh, team? Uh, play. Uh, he was. He was. He was at Leicester. Then came to uh, in Scotland. Um, Brendan Rodgers. Brendan Rodgers. I at that time when he was at Leicester, I would have loved to be with him because I feel that the guy is a good guy and uh, he has good. He has some good theory and I. I, I like the way he was handling his uh, his dressing room as well. Yeah, post the call glue, I have to join the ball. I couldn't think of anybody. I needed a league table in front of me. Right. So I could look down, you know. Just helps, oh, helps what, about what about Eddie O? What about Eddie O, Shaka? Yeah. Eddie how? Eddie who? Eddie who? How about Eddie who? Oh, He's sorry. kind of intense oh, sorry. to you. Uh, Eddie, Eddie O. o. So I went, I went, when I was up there a couple of years ago, I went to Newcastle Street and he's far more intense than I expected. You went. <laughs> you busy fool. <laughs> Why are you going to training? I was up there. I was. Were well, you selling shirts? He's the mayor of Newcastle. When I was up there two years ago. Yeah, what are you going to train for? You, you're done. You can't. See, to see my former teammate. Yes, Not appearance. I, I see. What was your former teammate? Eddie He's the mayor of Newcastle. Where was he? Your before, teammate. Don't forget. Pompey. Was he? Yeah. All right, fair enough. So you're mingling with managers now? Yeah, that's, that's how I rule in my off time. Wrexham manager Phil Parkinson. That's yeah, used to former play with teammate him, at Reading, yep. correct? So you can go to Wrexham. Gary O'Neill. Yep. Play with him at Pompey. We've all got teammates that are managers. I'm just saying. We don't come on here and blow our horn about it. <laughs> well, I'm just saying. Uh, I was going to see you ask me what I was doing there. I just <laughs> said I wanted to see my former teammate. Uh, you just, you're not in that. See, you're, you're on the other side of the fence now. You shouldn't be fraternising. <laughs> you shouldn't be fraternising with managers and players. <laughs> Uh, next question. Start, bench, or sell? Peak versions of Van Dyke, John Terry, and Vidic. Oh my! Oh my God! Wow! Right. Well, we're going to leave Oof. this to the centre half. Yep. Yeah. Leave it. Yeah. Leave this Stay to the right. Yeah, there you go. Wow! <laughs> wow! 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 I have to go for. Oh, I know John Terry, top. my kid, yep. I'll, uh, and after Vidic, and after Van Dijk. I'm sorry, but it's so hard, and it's a shame to put one of them last, but Vidic was simply amazing. And, uh, and uh, I mean, John Terry, I saw him growing up, being the uh, I was substitute for Marcel and I. I never expected to see him that going that high. And... Uh, his, uh, his power, his uh, consistency, consistency at the top level is simply amazing. And because I saw him uh, training, working hard, being only with short sleeve in winter, I have to put him first. I don't know Van Dyke a lot. So I saw him when he was at his peak. He was amazing, for, of course. But I saw Vidic playing. Vidic was, he was a pit bull. He, he never let go. And when he was when he when he beat you, it was over for you. Amazing defender, but John Vidic Van Dyke. It's harsh. Only one of those one player of the year, by the way. Van Dyke. Just say. Sounds yeah, like but you're starting Van Dyke. Yeah, that's I'm, that, that's. I'm putting him first. I don't know who I'd put second. I think Terry was. I, I'd, I. I could go either way with the second too, but but Terry. John Terry was a young boy at Chelsea when I was there. Went out in London, Nottingham Forest, got some experience. Then I left, and blah, blah, blah. And he, 
He, I don't know how long, much longer, a couple of years. He, but he was a... People don't realise he was a colossus for a long time for that club. I mean, he really was. You know. Hey, let's be honest, three good defenders there. Yeah, that's one of the most I've seen you guys stumped on it when you first say yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, you, there's no real wrong answer yeah, there. Yeah, that's three just, incredible that's just, defenders there. That's just an opinion. All right. What would go through your mind during lull periods of a game? Got to start with the goalkeeper on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Well, in, in all seriousness, you're just trying to stay focused because you know it's, it's, it's coming. I used to spend a lot of time running around in my box, so, uh, so <laughs> I'm sure I've told this story before. Back in our day, you have, used to have the Opta, the Opta Index, and you used to measure how much you run. So, <laughs> I mean, it was, it was pretty crude compared to today's standards. So come, come, the, come uh, session on Monday, training on Monday, and, and Harry would break out all the stats, I would have run further than half the team. <laughs> it was Staying great. Because when the boys up the other end, I just used to be running up and down and running all around. I used, to come, I used to come out every Monday looking like, yeah, oh, look how much ground I can come out. I'm like, that's right. That's right. <laughs> ah, so that's what I did in my, in my lull periods, run around. You don't, well, you don't really get many lull periods when you're playing central midfield, to be honest. So, so. Yeah. I don't know if you used to do this. I. Particularly towards the end of my career, I used to look at the clock a lot. You know, in every ground there'd be a huge, big yeah. <laughs> clock. And if the game was going, if the game wasn't going very well, I used to glance at it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I used to go tick, chuck. It would be like slow. I'd be like, oh my god, ten minutes to go. That's so funny to think of footballers doing that. Because well, it's usually what people do in an office job. Are we going home yet? <laughs> no, but like, think about it. If you win in a game and the game's tight, right? If you're beating somebody two one, it's a big game. You're under a bit of pressure. You're looking at the clock. Yeah. Right, you're looking at the clock and go, it over. Ref, how long's left? And maybe the ref not talking to you or he's away somewhere. You're looking at the clock. And then the other sense, if it's not, you know, sometimes you just, you're you're just, just bored. I used to say to the ref sometimes before <laughs> I used to go in the tunnel before a game and I'd say, any chance you can just make this like 20 minutes each way today? <laughs> what you still say when you come in the studio? Yeah, yeah. The <laughs> I don't say, listen. It's been a long day, but just make it 20 minutes each way and we can go home. <laughs> no, nobody will mind. Nobody will mind. Nobody, 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 nobody. And Frank, did you, did you always stay laser focused throughout the whole game? Of course not, you know. The first year at Chelsea, I was watching Craig Burley on my little period, mm -hmm. you know. I was say, what is he doing? He was watching. He, he, couldn't, he, couldn't, he couldn't take a break because he was waiting on one of my mistakes. <laughs> I had to defend. <laughs> exactly. And, uh, no, but I, I, remem I remember that uh, the only time that I never thought about something else on, this, on, the, on the field, and that was like Craig watching the clock, watching the fans, you know, watching my teammates playing and I say what the hell are they doing the only game that I was 100% focused on my duty was the World Cup final when I had to make sure I knew where Ronaldo was uh, <clears throat> putting himself you know because uh, because I knew that uh, uh, the time they got the ball back, if I didn't know where he was, it would have been a threat and a, a real danger for us. So I was watching him all the time and say, OK, we have the ball, but he's there. So when we lose the ball, I have to go there. That was crazy. That was great. I was exhausted at the end of the game. But otherwise, yeah, I was doing like a... I, had, I actually said one time to the ref at 3-0 halftime, he said, can we not come back second half? They're not going to come back. So what the point? You know, we're going to strike them. It's going to be humiliating for them. So. Can we go back home straight away? <laughs> he laughed. People don't realise sometimes the conversations that go on on the field. Yeah. With one another. Maybe it's changed up. I don't think so. Maybe, I'm, I'm and, sure. and refs. Certainly back in the day, you could have conversations with refs. Yeah, you I, could I, have a lot of fun with refs back I mean, maybe it's changed. Maybe they don't have reason. I remember we were at, when I was at Celtic. It was the first year we were going for the... Uh, Rangers had won all these titles and we were trying to stop them winning 10 titles in a row. It was a huge season. And I think we were playing, and we used that year with a great bunch of lads at Celtic, a good mix of uh, of some of the Scandinavian boys, new signings, the French, Italian, British. But we used to go to Dublin. I'm going to say twice a year as a group, twelve of us or whatever, and we'd go. We'd finish the game on a Saturday, and if we were playing Hibs in Edinburgh, we'd go to Edinburgh Airport, go to Dublin, and we'd have a couple of days drinking Guinness and blah blah blah. And so we're playing at Easter Road, I think it was Easter Road, and we're playing Hibs on a Saturday, and it's a tight game. I mean, tight as hell. We're going to Dublin that night. 
Alan Stobbs, their centre half, goes for a ball, and their striker, I don't know if he headed him or clattered him. Anyway, he's got a big cut. Stubbs is going to Dublin, right? He's got this big cut on his forehead, or it looked like it. He's on the ground, there's blood everywhere. Brian Scott runs on the physio, right? And there was, there's about six of us, seven of us went round Stubbs. He's lying on the ground, and Scott is wiping all the blood away. And we're going for the title, and Scotty, he said, what? He said, is he going to be OK for Dublin? <laughs> <laughs> and we, Scotty, the Brian the physio. <laughs> Now, bear in mind, we're in a league, we're in a fight for the title. Brian, Brian looked up and went, yeah, no problem, OK, let's go. No. <laughs> we couldn't care. <laughs> we couldn't care if Stubbsy had to go off and be replaced. But the most important thing was <laughs> the big man. <laughs> the, flight. the big man had to make the flight. It was paid for, we were going to Dublin. <laughs> and he was on the ground, Stubbsy went, I'll be all right. I'll be all right. And he's got, he's, got, he's got blood all running down his face. So, I mean, you have these sort of moments that uh, yeah, people just, think yeah. are more, more serious. More intense than they yeah, are. Yeah, there's always a bit of... You have to because of the pressure. You have to have a little bit of... Comic relief. Yeah, yeah. right. All right, Shaka, besides your algorithms, do you use your knowledge of differential equations in your top ten selections? No, not, uh, not differential equations, no. <laughs> there's a lot of math that goes into it, as you know, Kay, and your witness today. Yep. But not differential equations. That's just wrong uh, department. Okay. Yes. All right. Well, thanks so much for sending in your questions. Thanks to the guys for the stories, and we'll do it all over again tomorrow. See you oh, later. Some of you will. <laughs> <laughs>